You are getting ready to listen to the voice of Dr. Radi Ferguson, 2004 Olympian, four-time national judo champion, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, author, speaker, and coach. Hello, this is Dr. Radi Ferguson, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Radi. I want to tell you something. I, I've been in a situation in my life where everything was going great. I was getting ready to achieve my goal or objective. And then at the end, it just didn't happen. And I had to ask myself, was it chance and happenstance or did I self-sabotage myself? When things don't go right and, and they have been going right and then right, right before the quote unquote right stuff happens, things go wrong. You have to ask yourself if it was chance and happenstance or if you sabotage yourself. I mean, have you ever told yourself that you were going to do something, but then turned around and made sure that it wasn't going to happen? That's a great example of self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is all too common. Self-sabotage guarantees that you maintain the status quo, whether the status quo is good or bad. See, you're naturally resistant to change. This type of sabotage is rarely intentional. We subconsciously do and say things that make success much less likely. You might accidentally fail to set your alarm clock in the morning, or you might be late to an interview, or you might make a mistake and not plug in your 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 phone in the evening and then the phone shuts off. But these things are still self-sabotaging. And self-sabotage can be can be challenging to spot, but your friends and family members are excellent at spotting it for you. It's just that sometimes you don't want to hear from them, but you have to recognize that it's easier to spot in others than it is in yourself. If you'd like to learn more about self-sabotage and discover how you can get rid of this negative influence, then just bear with me for a few moments. Self-sabotage is actually a form of self-control. It's when an outcome is uncertain, we can create certainty by failing intentionally. See, for people who don't like to live a life of ambiguity, sometimes they will self-sabotage themselves and fail intentionally and then come up with a reason or excuse of why they did. So you can ensure the lack of a job offer by being late to your interview rather than suffer the lack of control that comes from waiting for that phone call after the interview. Self-sabotage allows you to dictate the outcome, even if it's negative. You can avoid change by sabotaging yourself. You might not like your current job, but you know everyone and how to navigate through the company. Familiarity is one form of comfort, and a new job brings uncertainty. So instead of dealing with the uncertainty, you just sabotage yourself. Stay at the new job where you feel comfortable, where you have your proverbial blanket and your binky. See, you don't know whether you enjoy a new job or not. You don't know whether you're like the coworkers or the friends or anybody. You don't even know how much stress you'll face. Sabotaging yourself can keep you in your comfort zone, even if it isn't very comfortable. It's the zone that you know. Another reason why you might self-sabotage is because you just feel like you, you know, like you deserve failure. If your self-esteem is low, you might believe that you deserve to fail. See, self-sabotage is common. It's also comforting in its own way. That this, is what, this is what's so problematic about it. Self-sabotage is also a great hindrance to progress and happiness. Repeated failures can ruin anybody's attitude. But here's how you can defeat self-sabotage and lead a new life. One, take a look at your past failures. When you made poor choices, consider your thoughts. Were they reasonable? Were they unreasonable? Look, no one, is, no one is perfect. Nobody. And you're bound to make mistakes. However, when you do make a mistake, analyze your mistake. Ask yourself why you made it. And when you do something that you know is wrong, man, look in the mirror and admit to yourself that you were wrong. And take a note of it. Do this for every failure that you have and pay particular attention 
to your past failures. If you see signs of self-sabotage, ask yourself why you did it. Analyze the pattern. Number two, determine appropriate behavior. You know what appropriate behavior is, and you also know what inappropriate behavior is. You're an adult. After recognizing the times that you sabotage yourself, determine if your behavior was appropriate or inappropriate. Take the time to figure out what the best course of action would have been. And then take the self-corrective measures. Number three, think about how much self-sabotage has cost you in the past. I mean, you've missed out on a lot because of self-sabotage. Do you make less money, have fewer friends, and live a less fulfilling life because you sabotage yourself? Realize how much self-sabotage costs and make the change. And number four, how much has your self-sabotage harmed others? How have your friends, family members, and other loved ones been affected? Living a small life has an impact on everyone around you. Give yourself effective reasons to change your behavior. I can tell you this. As an athlete, I have to ask myself sometimes, am I self-sabotaging myself based upon the times when I've basically inflicted pain on myself? Now, there's no way around putting discomfort and pain on yourself if you're in an athletic environment. But if, as you're doing that, are you self-sabotaging your ability and your mobility in the future? I have to ask myself those questions because I still enjoy getting on the map. I still enjoy going hard at, at times, but I'm asking myself, man, am I inflicting further pain on myself and self-sabotaging my ability and my mobility in the future? I ask myself these questions. And when I ask myself these questions, I try to make some adjustments and changes in terms of taking my supplements, taking my fish oil, taking my ibuprofen when I need to, doing my cryotherapy and doing things that are necessary so that I can move later on in life. Doing my stretching, and Lord knows I don't like stretching, but doing the things that will cause me not to self-sabotage myself because Quite honestly, when I go throughout the day and I don't stretch, I'm actually self-sabotaging myself in terms of my mobility. So I have these issues and problems too. You may have them as well. You have to sit down and actually, you know, do a self-reflective analysis and ask yourself, are you sabotaging yourself? Because self-sabotage is a defense mechanism. Sabotaging yourself keeps you safe. It keeps you comfortable. It keeps you in control but at the expense of making any real progress in life. Stopping this pattern of behavior requires reflection, honesty, some quality friends and family, and a little bit of courage. Examine your life for instances of self-sabotage. Make the necessary changes to your behavior and enjoy your resulting success. Man, this is Dr. Ferguson. Pardon my voice. I am still recovering from Howard University homecoming. I ended up getting a, a slight cold because, man, I didn't get a lot of sleep. And then I came back when I just hit the grindstone on work. And this cold is really hard to shake. So when I'm talking, it's kind of hard to breathe at times. That's why I take all these pauses because um, my nose is a little bit stuffy. But I want you to remember that I love you, but God loves you best. And have a super fantastic day. And remember, excellence is a lifestyle. Live it.